another episode of the social side of sport. I'm Meg Wilson, and I'm here again with renowned sports sociologist, Dr. Jay Coakley. Jay, as always, it's a pleasure to discuss the important issues in sports with you. Hey, I enjoy it as well, and I'm looking forward to our discussion today. Today, we're going to do a deep dive into the topic that everyone is talking about, payment for college athletes. Money, money, money. (laughs) <laughs> and this does not mean that universities are going to start writing checks to athletes. Yes, please. But what does it mean? Maybe you could give us a little bit of the basics and go through what NIL really is and why it's such an issue. Well, yeah, this is uh, an interesting thing because the NCAA over the years has controlled athletes and what kinds of benefits that they can receive in connection with their participation. And the big control that they've exerted is simply over scholarships. You know, they have designated that a a definition of a scholarship and what's involved in it, and all universities have to stick with that. And then uh, they have also uh, prevented athletes from making any kind of money. And this is to preserve their definition of amateur, amateurism and and college sport as as an example of amateurism. They've uh, prevented athletes from making money in jobs and prevented them from, in a sense, selling their skills apart from their involvement on on an intercollegiate sport team or uh, making money, profiting on their uh, name, their image, or their likeness. And and in today's world with social media and, uh, you know, so much of our lives are mediated that uh, athletes have their names, images, and likenesses all over the place, and, and they can't benefit from that in any way. Whereas the NCAA and the universities and the conferences can benefit significantly from using athletes' names, images, and likenesses. And then uh, thirdly, uh, the the NCAA has controlled all issues related to how athletes might share in the revenues that are being generated by college sports. Uh, They've certainly banned any kind of cash payment for participating in college sports. And they've also set limits, and this is one that that I know you're interested in, they've set limits on uh, healthcare benefits. So, uh, and and as uh, sports have become more intense and athletes have an increasing number of injuries while they're participating on college teams, and some of these injuries have long-term implications in their lives, it's really important, you know, what can an athlete expect from a university in terms of uh, long-term health insurance coverage and so on. So the, the NCAA ha- has controlled most of that. So what that means is basically the NCAA is setting limits on what athletes can get. And athletes, in a sense, are generating a lot of revenue. So this would be like uh, video game makers saying that everybody working on producing a video game, whether it be software people or music people or video people, what we're going to do is we're going to get together with all the other video companies and we're going to set a limit on their salary of $35,000 and we're not going to give them any insurance and we're going to prevent them from going anywhere else within the industry and getting a job. And and if, if video game producers did that, uh, the the antitrust people would be jumping right on their back saying, you can't do that. That's a violation of antitrust law. Well, the NCAA has been doing it from the get-go for years, and they have been allowed, in a sense, to get by with what people are calling now antitrust violations. And that's where the big court cases are. And that's the big court case that just happened the, uh, this week, Uh, related to uh, the kinds of benefits that educationally related benefits that athletes can get in connection with their scholarships. So we can talk more about the specifics, but that kind of uh, sets uh, the overall framework. And and I want to say one other thing. This issue about name, image, and likeness was raised back in 2009 by Ed O'Bannon, who was a former athlete at UCLA and had a unique physical appearance. He was a lefty, 
Uh, he had some really unique kinds of moves. And somebody called him while he was working as a car salesman in Las Vegas. Somebody called him and said, you know, I'm playing this video game, this electronic arts video game uh, of college basketball, and you're in it. And your number is in it. Your image is in it. Your likeness is in it. And Ed O'Bannon said, no kidding. Let me come over and look at that game. And he went over and he looked at it and he said, I never gave him permission to use my name, image, and likeness. And so he got a lawyer and he filed a lawsuit, took five years, but he got a settlement. It, uh, the settlement was for, uh, for millions of dollars. He only got 15,000 because, you know, a third of all that money went to the lawyers. And, uh, and it went to some of the other athletes whose name, images, and likenesses were being used in the video game. So uh, the NCAA then was up against uh, the wall. And if they wanted to continue doing this with this game, which they were making money on, they had to say, uh, we've got to open up the door to pay the athletes or at least get their permission. But they didn't want to do that. So basically, they told Electronic Arts to can the game. I mean, you know, to, to eliminate it rather than giving athletes anything. So since 2014, the NCAA has had seven years to get their act together and to figure out how they're going to deal with this, but they've been dragging their heels. They don't want to give the athletes anything. So, uh, you know, they've given little things here and there, but nothing significant. So now the court cases are coming fast and, and furiously, and they're all antitrust cases. They're saying that, that, that the NCAA can't get all these universities together and have them restrict what athletes can get in terms related to all of the billions that, of dollars that they're, that they're generating in certain sports.